Hello, Open Repositories 2018. I'm Danny Lamb, tech lead for the Allendora Foundation. And unfortunately, I couldn't make it down to Open Repositories uh, this year, but I'm not going to let that stop me from giving my obligatory OR demo. So uh, here we go. I've got a fresh Drupal instance with all of the claw modules installed. Uh, I've got a fresh Fedora 4. Well, I've got one piece of content in there, but we'll get back to that in a sec here. And uh, I installed all of this with Claw Playbook. So if you're ever curious about Claw or want to try it out, uh, go to GitHub, grab Claw Playbook. And uh, if you can install Ansible and Vagrant, you can have yourself uh, a, a working Claw. Uh, it's as easy as uh, typing Vagrant up into a command line. So uh, anyway, back to it. So I do have that one piece of content here. This is actually a taxonomy term in Drupal. It's uh, for Open Sea Dragon here. Let me show it to you. And uh, taxonomy terms in Drupal are used to tag uh, content to categorize and organize uh, data. Uh, and we, uh, with Claw, take it kind of one step further. So we take these tags and we actually associate these with external URIs. Uh, this one's for Open Sea Dragon, so I'm pointing to their, uh, their home page. Uh, but obviously, this external URI could come from a controlled vocabulary or from an ontology. Um, and then we use these tags to really drive uh, the behavior of the site. And it's not really the tags that are doing it. It's something called the context module, which I'll show you momentarily here. Um, but I've got this one tag, and that's it. And I'm going to need more to complete this demo. So uh, I could go back to like the administrative page here and force you guys to suffer watching me uh, you know, do this eight eight more times, uh, but instead I'm actually going to uh, use uh, Claw's batch ingest feature, uh, which is really Drupal's migrate feature, uh, so I'll show that to you. Uh, and what Drupal uh, migrate does is it lets you describe migrations into Claw uh, using YAML, and then it gives you a UI that you can use to run these. So your YAML kind of uh, lists out the steps of uh, what you're trying to do, and it'll help you pull everything in. Uh, and it can work with a CSV or XML. You can XPath out elements and extract data that way. Uh, you know, it'll work with stuff on your local file system or over HTTP, and you can do a lot of stuff with Drupal Migrate. It's super powerful. And uh, what I'm going to do with it is I'm going to uh, bulk import some tags from a CSV. So I've got this uh, CSV file here. It's on GitHub. And, uh, you know, very simple here, right? Name, description, and then these external URIs. And you can see that we use uh, some, uh, some entries from the uh, PCDMU ontology. We also uh, use a little bit of the, uh, the core control vocabulary. And I'm also using a DCMI type collection to uh, tag collections. Uh, anyway, these uh, PCDM use ones here, these are the only ones that are really required. Everything else is kind of what you want it to be. You know, if you if you think an image should be described as like a schema image object or something, you know, you can do that too, right? But just for the purposes of demonstration, this is what I'm using. So we're going to go and we're going to execute this. And the Drupal migrate uh, framework is pretty cool. It'll let you roll back botched. Uh, migrations and you can also go and like update the CSV and then if you take this update box uh, it'll just go and force everything to be in line with uh, with the changes you made it's pretty neat I'm just gonna straight up import this here so here they go and then if we go back to Fedora okay you can see these are starting to roll in now and so here come all of our taxonomy terms Here's the one for PCDM use uh, service file. Okay. And so here, we'll show you. They are, of course, also in Drupal. Bam. So here we go. So here's the tags I'm going to use in this demo to do things. Okay. So let's go make some content with it. I'm going to make a collection. Uh, collection holds things okay and it's not going to be a member of anything here we'll make it like a root collection so to speak uh, and we're just going to give it the tag uh, of collection so it's one of the tags we imported there and there it goes so because this is a collection okay uh, 
context kind of knows, okay, well, you're a collection, so then I should be showing members of this collection. So we'll try to display a, a page list of members here. Uh, but of course, it's empty, right? So let's go add uh, a member to it, and then we'll, we'll come back and check it out. So let's just add a basic image object. And uh, it's basic, just like this descriptive metadata profile, basically just have title and description. But again, using Drupal, you can configure all of this and set up your forms and everything. Uh, here we go. So we're a member of this collection, and then uh, I'm just going to give it a tag uh, of image. So here we go. All right, so it's empty. We haven't added any files, but let's just go back to the collection. And now you'll see, okay, here we go, it's in this block. And like I said, this block is here because of this tag. So if I were to go and edit this tag, okay, this members block, see it disappears, okay. And it's not necessarily the tag that's important here as much as it is, is that we've used the context module to say, hey, when you have this tag, you show this block, okay? And so all of this stuff is actually configurable. It's not hard-coded. There's nowhere in the code that's doing this, all right? This is this is actually just kind of using the system the way it's meant to be used, all right? So let's go back to this. Now let's add a file to this. So we're going to actually give it an image, okay? We're going to give it a, well, here. So you can see the different uh, types of files that we support here. We support audio, video, images, and then kind of a generic file that's a fallback for something that doesn't fit into the other categories. So we're going to add an image. Okay, I've got a weird piece of concept art here that I like to use. And we're going to call it uh, Example Image Preservation Master. And I think this is kind of like what someone in the 80s would think an Apple Watch would have looked like. So I'm just going to put that in for the alternative text. Um, and then we're just going to tag this as, excuse me, it is a preservation master. So we're going to save. And because this is tagged as a preservation master, it's going to kind of run through the conditions and context. And it's going to realize it needs to generate some derivatives. So it's going to go ahead and do that for us too. So here we go. Here's the actual file there. Right, right I said, pretty cool watch. Um, and you can see the basic uh, technical metadata that it's managed to extract out of it. Uh, now, if we go to the actual image itself here, you're going to see that this, this image is kind of bubbled up uh, into the display. Uh, and if you go check out its media, you're going to see the, uh, the derivatives that have been generated for you automatically. Okay, so we ingested this, and then uh, the service file and the thumbnail image were generated for us automatically. Now, the way this is actually done uh, is that something will go and publish uh, a message on the queue, and then something will read from that queue, and it will go poke a web service, and then the web service will execute image magic, and then the results will get you know returned back and ingested back into Drupal. Okay, um, but that first part of the chain there, the thing that publishes the message on the queue, that's a Drupal action. Drupal Actions are nice because if you uh, kind of do your functions as Drupal Actions, it means that you can use them through the UI in a lot of different places. Uh, so right here, I'm going to use Drupal Action to actually delete uh, the display copy, the service file. Okay, And I'm doing this through kind of a, a bulk operation kind of uh, widget that you can add to any view that you make in Drupal. Uh, there's other places where you can use actions. This isn't the only place, but here I'm going to do this. So I'm going to nefariously delete the uh, display copy. So if we go back here, you can see it's gone. Okay. Uh, so now I'm going to use another Drupal action uh, to generate the derivative back. So I'm going to recreate our service file here. So uh, if I go back to, you can also do it from this content view, right? You don't have to be viewing it as a member or media of a particular object. Uh, I'm going to go to this image, and you can see here that I have now have these actions for nodes that are used to generate the derivative. So I'm going to say to uh, regenerate the service file from the preservation master. I'll apply it. So we'll go check it back out. The, the service files back. So we have our display copy here, okay? And uh, what's really cool about Drupal Actions is that if they're complicated, uh, that meaning that they require input from uh, a repository administrator, uh, you can actually go and create your own instance of an action and configure it. So if you check it out here, where it says create an advanced action, 
here I've got one that says generate an image derivative, right? That's pretty neato. And you can use that to make your own derivative generation function. So here I'm going to go to mine that I have got. This one says, uh, here's the generate a service file. Here's the generate a thumbnail. So we'll play with this one uh, here. We're going to configure it. And so you can see you've got a form. Uh, you can set up kind of the queue that the message goes to, which for the most part you probably shouldn't mess with. Um, but then you can also say, hey, you know, when something that's tagged as a service file uh, gets ingested or updated, then you should create a derivative and you're going to tag that as a thumbnail. Uh, and you can set its MIME type and you can set some additional arguments here. So uh, I'm just going to change this up a little bit. So we're going to make a PNG instead. We're going to make it 300 by 300. Okay, so the next time I generate a thumbnail, it's going to be it's going to be a little bit bigger. Let's actually go back to content here. I'll show you the basic image. If we go to its media, you'll see. Okay, so it's a it's 100 by 100 right now. Well, 100 by 99. Uh, so let's go back, and we can now regenerate the thumbnail. We're going to do that. We go check it out. It's going to be bigger. Hey, here it is. See, and it's a PNG, right? And it's 300 by 300. Okay, so that's that's pretty sweet. And all that is kind of driven by the context module as well. So we check to see, you know, what has tags of what and what kind of uh, owns the the file that got ingested and what its tags are. And we kind of use that to suss things out to figure out what derivatives to make. And again, this is all also completely configurable through context. So none of this is hardwired or set in stone. You can totally change this up like however you want. Okay. Um, so let me give you maybe one more good example of using context. So we're going to use uh, the context module this time to uh, change displays based on the way things are tagged. So check it out here. And this meets a pretty uh, basic use case. So we're going to create a large image object in 7x terms, uh, a large image object, excuse me, creating an article here. I need to create a repository item. Okay, and uh, I created that repository uh, item content type, but uh, you can totally create your own as well, like everything. Um, it's all totally configurable. Basically, all you need to do is make a metadata profile that has kind of two basic bits of structure. You need to have this member of field. You need to have this tags field. As long as you got that going on, uh, you can do whatever you want here. So we're going to just do this. We're going to say that this is a uh, member of the example collection. And uh, we're going to tag this as an image. And we're also going to tag it using that open C dragon tag that I showed earlier. So we're going to save this. OK, and so now we're going to add a file. OK, and we're going to add a TIFF. And uh, Drupal doesn't understand that TIFFs are images. It thinks it's just a file. So let's just add a TIFF here. And it's a preservation master. OK. So we're on the actual uh, media here. But let's go look at the, uh, the node that owns it. So you're going to see we have the image. All right, and it's because we have that open C dragon tag. So just to kind of further the illustration here, let's uh, delete this. And it's going to revert to the regular view, which is just going to try to show the display copy. So you're going to get like a regular JPEG out of it that was automatically generated. And uh, just to go one further here, uh, if we were to get rid of this and we were instead to say, no, actually, this is just some generic binary. I don't know how to interpret it. Definitely not an image, right? Uh, and if you save that, uh, then it's just going to try to offer you the download link, right? So it's all the same thing behind the scenes. It's just this bit of descriptive metadata and a handful of files. But the way that you tag it uh, defines how it gets interpreted by the system. So let's go ahead and just put that back. And then I'll actually show you the context UI. Here we go. Save. Okay, all right, so if we go to structure, context, 
Uh, you can see here we have quite a few that I've made up, but context is really just uh, if this, then that kind of logic. So uh, here you can see we use this. Here's uh, media. So all media, if the condition, if it is a media, the reaction, then uh, you index it in Fedora and index it in the triple store, right? Uh, also, if you're kind of deleting things, then the reaction then turns into, into deleting, right? So pretty neat there and pretty straightforward. Uh, and the cool thing is that if you uh, kind of do things the context way, you end up writing your logic uh, in plugins, and these plugins provide forms. So sort of all of the stuff that before would have been buried uh, is now actually exposed to the user through a UI. So you kind of have like complete control over hooks and alters and all that sort of stuff uh, if you set it up to work with context. So let's go back here. And here's the the one to generate the derivatives, the image preservation master. So here's a little bit more complicated of an example. Uh, if a media is tagged with the preservation master term and it's owned by a node that's tagged with the image term, then when it's time to create derivatives, you generate a service file from an image preservation master. There's that action again. So you can execute arbitrary uh, actions uh, from the context UI. So using this, uh, you can use context as just like this insane control panel to completely set up your repository and do all kinds of things. Anything you could do as a Drupal action, plus a whole slew of other stuff that they have uh, defined. Uh, so you can do things like uh, switch the display like we were doing before with uh, large images. You can uh, swap out forms to show uh, someone with uh, less permissions a more restricted view of a form or something, right? You can uh, change change themes, uh, which actually that's a pretty good example. So let's change themes here. So we're going to make our own context here just to show you this is totally doable. So let's just do one for images. So all images. And what we're going to do is we're going to just change the theme anytime you look at an image. OK, so blah, blah, blah. all right. So I'm going to add a condition if the node has the term of image, then I am going to add a reaction and I'll change the theme and I'll change it from our sweet uh, Islandora theme carapace uh, to the boring blue default Drupal theme Bardic. So I'm going to save. Okay, and so now if I go back and I like, here's how the theme looks. Oh, <laughs> we're back on the object. So if we go to the home page, you'll see we're on this uh, nice, uh, sweet Island or theme. And if we go back to the image, OK, it's uh, kind of boring old Bardic. And uh, just, to, just to hammer it home here, if we delete these tags, uh, it will show back up in the Island or theme. OK, all right, so that's it. I'm like totally over time right now. Uh, so anyway, I'll, I'll let John get back to it. But uh, thank you all for uh, watching my spiel. And uh, I hope you learned a little bit about Claw. And if you ever want to check it out, like feel free to pop a message on the list or hop into IRC. And again, if you want to try it out, uh, you can use Claw Playbook to spin up an instance uh, for you, to, for you to, to mess around with very, very easily. All right. Thank you very much, and I uh, hope you enjoy open repositories.